Quinn ousts Delaney <laughs> is the uh, headline. Um, so, in so much as you can, because I, I'm, I'm trying to read and follow the story, and you've given uh, different bits and bobs of uh, and parts of the vision, I suppose, of what you're trying to do. If for somebody who's been half following it, can you explain in a line or two sure, well, what it is you're trying to do or what it is yeah, you're hoping so, to so, do? So, first of all, uh, I spoke about it. Brian would be very passionate about it. And when I got working with Virgin Media, we found ourselves talking about it a lot off air and then again on air when the whole Martin O'Neill, Roy Keane situation was coming to an end and they were, everybody was saying the problem in Irish football at the top. And I said, well, let's have a look at the rest of it here. And uh, that's when I started to look at it quite, quite closely, I suppose, and finding out stuff about it and meeting people. And, and then it became quite obvious that... Uh, the 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 <laughs> that wasn't me, by the way. <laughs> um, the, the, the issue, I, I believe, is, you know, football is an important part of the fabric of this country, I believe. But where the professional game was at was nowhere near its deserved spot. And then you look, why isn't it there? What's gone wrong with it? Uh, how can we then stretch it right through to the end to say, OK, clubs and getting themselves right is one thing, but what about pathways for our young players that means they don't have to go off to England at 16 with no education? And, and that, that, that's the, the big one, and take that big risk. Now, it was fine when you were going to Man United and you were going to Arsenal and Liverpool in the old days because you could then drop and become a pro at one of the clubs lower. Yeah. But when you're going to the lower clubs now, there isn't really anywhere to drop. And, and I think it's pretty horrific in this day and age when education is so important. So then you look at players and say, OK, how can you make it an aspiration of a young player here to stay, get a great education, aspire to play in the League of Ireland, and if you're good enough, go off to England for a million quid and the clubs could all yeah. generate and function properly. Um, is that such a big ask in the modern world? And to bring it out of where it is now to that, there's a, a number of components has to happen. Uh, it has to become investable, right? And somebody has to have the vision as a commercial, uh, I suppose, long view person that if certain things were put in place and if each club were given the ability to retain the youngsters and stop them heading off at 16, 15, 16, because despite how, how great these new leagues might turn out to be, 13s, 15s, 17s, national leagues, there'll still be scouts on the touchline ready to take them. So no matter what the clubs do and the expense that they're put to to make these leagues, it's, it's hard. So, so there has to be a sea change at that part and then it'll go through to you know, the commercial reality of what a, what a football club can achieve over here that, that they're not doing now. For instance, I would, I would just throw this out to you. Can you imagine the 20 clubs on one deal, one kit manufacturer, how much a kit manufacturer would give for that to be the main player and have football wrapped up here, as opposed to the fragmented way that that, that particular yeah. deals are done. But then you, you have to look at it a lot more. The, the football is fragmented anyway in this country. You have so many different leagues, you know. You don't have that lovely pyramid that the GAA has, club, county, all get to an All-Ireland final, that's the aim. Everybody gets to the top. We have so many different leagues, you know, and I feel sorry for the FAI in many ways because they're looking after the Munster Senior League, the Connacht League, the Leinster Senior League, the AUL League. There's so many, yeah. and it becomes a real, a real fragmented mess. Who do you support? Who do you give the money to? What money is there? Um, but if you go back to the education of young players and you know, keeping them at home and aspiring to play for a League of Ireland club, getting a commercial view on whether that's possible, and then going to government and say, look, the exchequer will get this return in 10 years' time if these kids stay at home. The clubs will get coaches who will be able to coach. We, we're great at giving them badges, and, and they, they deserve them. We've got some brilliant coaches in this country, but we don't have the work for them. And a lot of them are doing voluntary stuff, despite being really brilliant professional people. So. What, what, what we're trying to look at with a group of people, and, and this is not me, I, I'm a bit of a mouthpiece for it really, and it's Niall Quinn's idea, it's not Niall Quinn's idea, it's other good people who got in touch with me when I started, and Brian and I started this, and we looked at, at what could be done, and then suddenly more people popped up, and, and it's been really good, Now I'm not going to tell people who these, who these are, but we would have people who worked in the MLS, for instance, people who worked in the Caribbean Cricket League, and how that came from being in, in, in dressing rooms as sheds to like a proper a proper league that was sold with TV rights around the world. Now, I got ridiculed by some, saying, oh, it's the League of Ireland, you know, you're dreaming. Why can't we just think a little bit more modern, and why can't we put pressure on government, and on a pressure that they would like, that they can't turn down, that our young people should not be heading off to England before they're even ready to, to, to go to university. Never mind, even at junior cert level, they're, they're, they're being whisked away. And just on that, 
right? I, I read on the FAI's website that scouts now have to be vetted. So it's their effort to try and protect the player, but in effect, they're actually facilitating this move abroad at 15, 16 years of age for a young lad. And, and as long as that's happening, I don't think the League of Ireland can be that place to, to aspire. So it's very important. My, my, my biggest belief is that if you make it aspirational for young players, and if they want to stay and get their education, the rest of the league will actually do better. Everything starts from the bottom up. Yeah. Everything positive starts from the bottom up. And, and then the commercial stuff can come into play. And then we can start. And, and the, the, the biggest bit that I've learned in the last few months, and I should have known this from my time in Sunderland, was the role the clubs have in the community. And each club should have a, a community play, whether it's learning through football, getting into every school like the GAA coaches do, going into, to, to, and I mean this for girls, for, for boys, and making the club important in the locality. Cork and Bohemians are doing it more than a club, is, is the, is the, uh, the title of, of the, the, the efforts that they're putting in. And they're doing great work, but I think you know, government money should help that along. You know, and I would, I would say to you now that the Sunderland Foundation, uh, when, when things were tough at Sunderland, and we were going through some bad times, and you looked at the foundation and what it was doing, suddenly you know, the, the result didn't matter that much. And I think if, if we could give football clubs the ability to do that and to have a serious role in the community, and if we can put it together in a commercially appeasing manner that government will say the exchequer can actually invest in this, then I think it not only could it happen, it should happen. People will have read about this and they will have seen articles saying this is fantastic to have a vision and uh, it's, it's a, a route into the modern world and I've seen articles similarly absolutely destroy the thing and yep. uh, in every way possible. What's the next step? I saw you met with Frank Gavin. So do you somehow publish this is the vision, this is what we're hoping to do next, because at the moment we're working off scraps and you know, you hear things, you hear all yeah. the good stuff you've talked about and equally you hear things like, well, big tax breaks, and I know you're making the argument that the Exchequer will ultimately be refunded, but there's tax breaks, there's passports being talked about for there's, foreign there's, players. There's a number, it can yeah, go so, anywhere. So, so, but so where, yeah. do we, where, where does this go next okay, well, over well, the next six months? All right, so well, let me put it this way. I think there's, they say there's 400,000 members of football clubs all over the country playing in different leagues every weekend. Um, I would compare that to the film industry, and I'd ask you how many people benefited from the tax breaks given to the film industry. It's great that it happened, and I'm not knocking it, you know, but um, for all the millions that were created for the film industry, and the film industry is thriving here, did it help 200, 400, 800 people? I don't know. But I just think football is deserving of some help. It doesn't, it's not politically aligned the way rugby is, the way GAA is. It does not have that power or influence. And, and it needs a push in that direction, and you have to sometimes do it yourself. And so where, where it's going, just to, yeah. to, to follow up on that point, there are some really good people who've come together, and they've spoken to a few of the clubs, and some of the clubs are a little bit scared, I think, to, to, to come out and speak, and, and speak with us. But the, the area that's really interesting, I suppose, is the commercial viability of all this, mm -hmm. okay? And with that, I know the FAI have um, a, uh, I think they've, they've a, a something going on with Delight at the moment with, with the clubs and to say how it might get better and Delight are looking at it on behalf of the FEI. Well, what, what our group is doing, we'll probably have a, what well, we do have, sorry, I should say, we would have uh, another group as, as well known as Delight to look at it independently and see what can match up. And this is not anti-FEI against the FEI, this is to go in and increase the voice. Okay, so, so this is not a, a fight with the FEI, this is to say, look, this could happen, you're saying this is the way you want it, we're saying this could happen, then it's the time to get it out there and see what people think. Yeah. And I hope that, uh, you know, politicians with the, with the ability, with the keys to the, to the bank, uh, would look on football as deserving of a break because the very fabric of football is in question here in this country because we're only going to get worse and worse. The, the Declan Rice thing and what that thrown up, you know, about, about you know, players born uh, away from here and what they can do, that hurts. But you know what really hurts? Uh, and, you know, uh, when you look back, and I got some great information from, from a guy, I won't name him here now, but who's, who's doing a doctorate, uh, he gave me some great information on, on the players who have stayed at home trying to get into under-17, under-19 teams, under-21 teams. And over the last 30 years, they get to play in the odd friendly. But the amount of players who are just in an academy in England, just because they got to an academy, come and play in all the other matches, it means the, the aspirations here are stemmed already. And until sure. we stop that, uh, I have great faith that Stephen Kenny will actually do his oh, bit to stop that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, it, but there has to be more. And if, if our view that we take, the professional commercial view that will be brought on 
uh, soon, and we'll bring that to the FAI. And if the FAI is peace with delight, if it can marry up, and if there can be pressure put on, then we've all done something right. Okay. But there's no row with the FAI, and, and yes, we met Fran, and, and he explained everything about the 13, 15, 17s, where they go. But as long as you know, there's a scout on the touchline taking them at 15, 16, and it's very hard. I speak to parents all the time. It's very hard to say to somebody, leave them at home, don't go for it. But it's getting easier because they're going to Tranmere, they're going to South End. You know, they're not going to Manchester yeah. United, and we have to have something better in place. Brian, the clock's coming against us, so can you give us a word on Brian's proposals, or, or on um, <coughs> Niall's proposals, what you know of them? Because it was fairly clear, we spoke to you a couple of weeks ago on the show, and you do feel the game has been mismanaged here on various fronts. So well, talk well, to us about what Niall's talking about. Well, just uh, to do a geographical uh, correction on my earlier thing, Chisinau is in Moldova, not in Azerbaijan. <laughs> so sorry if that had nothing to do with it. Niall's proposal is not to move the league to, to Moldova or Chisinau, <laughs> but just so nobody is too busy on Twitter saying your man never went to his geography in school. I actually did. I, got, I, got a, I, I did well in geography in medieval search. <laughs> no, Niall, you'd have been proud of me, but then I didn't become I a literally, player. I literally just said the clock is against us. <laughs> that is what you've taken me. I was dodging the, do, dodging the bullet because he expressed the whole picture so well. Well, give, give us the a minute. Or okay, two. I'll yeah, tell you. Yeah. FAI having a ban, in my opinion, <laughs> can't fund. Can't, can't fund the leagues that they're trying to run at the moment. The, the money around the league is so poor. The fact that £110,000 is the prize money for winning the league is abysmal and disgraceful. We, they have forced the 13s, 15s, 17s, 19s on the club. Given that it's a good idea that, 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 that the best players should be playing against each other at a good level, I agree with that, 1579, but there should be leagues in between. Yeah. You can't run that in between. If the, the clubs haven't a been and the association haven't a been, no one has a been. Yeah. So <laughs> where, how, well, how do you do it? How do you bring teams all around the country? How do you play, pay the proper coaches? We have, I would say, the dearest coaching courses almost in Europe here in Ireland. If anyone wants to get a coaching badge, many of you have applied to do a coaching course under the FAI. They are so expensive, they are prohibitive to do coaching courses. So good people don't get to do the coaching courses. But anyway, when you do get qualifications, there's no work, there's no industry because the clubs can't pay. The best coaches should be working with the youngest players. Yeah. Now, you know, that might sound mad, but that's how it should yeah. be. The best, but the people that you remember most is probably the first coach that you had at schoolboy level, apart from him, because he had some of the greatest fellas ever managed in the game. But we all remember the guy who was good to us, or the girl who was good to us when we were kids. We need to have better coaches at the younger age groups. We need to have talented, enthusiastic, people who have a bit of brilliance and potential about it, running, walking right across the ball with the best players, but not necessarily in the League of Ireland clubs at Tortain, because we're creating elitism at Tortain that's putting off the other kids playing. The other ki if you haven't got into a League of Ireland club now for the under Tortains, what's your incentive? Where do you go? Where do you go? When I was playing, you were playing. You, you, you could get the 17, 18, and if you hadn't made it or got to England or got to the international team, you could still say, well, I might get into the first team soon, and then I could go on there. Now, the cutoff is going down to 15, to Tortain, 14 years of age. You're saying you haven't made that tour then. But there needs to be a vibrancy about it. it needs to be, look at, here was one of the maddest ones ever. The FAI decided to launch our league last Tuesday when the league was starting on Friday night. What was happening on Tuesday? Man Manchester PSG. night was on yeah. Virgin Media that particular night. The Declan Rice thing breaks out. And it's buried, it's buried. The fact the league was starting. But still, Kevin was at the match Friday night. We were in Ninja Car. Places crowds. Is packed. Yeah. Great crowds for the first match of the season. But why, why can't they use their noggins a bit? Use Sorry, use their brains a bit and say. <laughs> yeah. That's a Scottish word. Scottish as well. word noggin. All no, right, we're back on. So <laughs> we're back in tune. We're back. So why can't they do be yeah. inventive? A you more specific question. The FAI currently own the league, run the league. Would you like the league to leave the FAI? I think the FAI would actually be relieved. I think they're, they're in some ways they're kind of pleased about what Niall has been saying because it, it's kind of taken a little bit like we might have a get out here because I think they see it as a burden. They don't have people properly assigned 
only to doing the job of the league. They're doing so many different jobs in the, in the same association. They're not specific around the job about the league in itself, which is, which is kind of mad. It's yeah, our best yeah. league, our top league. Most the people who, who, who follow it are who are interested in it. I mean, I saw a piece in, in, in Ireland, uh, <coughs> Times Ireland, uh, early this morning, I was reading it, The Madness of Five in the Morning, uh, that lad, uh, Royce is the second name as well, and he, he said, the, the current Irish captain and probably the next Irish captain came out of the League of Ireland, as did Paul McGrath and Roy Keane. And just that sentence stood out for me. I said, yeah, that's true, Seamus Coleman, and probably the next fellow, Matt Doherty, if he's going to be made captain. They've got, and the next fellow might well come out of it. Yeah. But why don't, we, why don't we display care and attention and love for it and enthusiasm and put people in to run it? That really, that's their fixation to make it massive, to make it, that's not just the cult following that it is at the moment, which yeah. is, it's yeah. a kind of a cult following yeah. that all came out on the one night last Friday night around the league. <laughs> but it has so much more potential. We need it, as Noel said, to develop the players. We cannot depend on the English clubs anymore. They're not going in the numbers, and we need to educate those. We don't. We need to uh, provide a proper educational structure for the for those players that. We, we prevent a situation where they come back and they fall between the gaps and they come back embarrassed here and sneaking, sneaking under the table. Yeah. We, we need to rule that out as an option. That Either they go when they're, they're good enough to get into the first teams and the clubs are properly compensated and they go with the education that gives them a, a, a backstop that when they come back yeah. into the situation here, they have somewhere to go. A very last one. Are you hopeful that what Niall Quinn has been advocating will happen? <laughs> Uh, I, 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 am I hopeful? I am very hopeful because he has done, you know, so much in the game. Uh, he has so much experience in the game as a, as a player, as a as a as a as a great player in the, in the, at a top level with the international team. And what he did as a short-term manager, but as a chairman in the club that was struggling at the time. And yet, you know, I met him coming back to Manchester City two weeks ago. He, he the, the Chelsea Manchester City match. He's over at Manchester City to do something where one of the supporters, he was one of the his all time favourite players and wanted to meet and he's doing something for him that so he's still so highly respecting the game up there. I think he has a chance of 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 pulling people together here and motivating people here and tapping into that love that there is around around the game, around, not even in the game, there are people who are on the fringes of it who probably followed the team in Niall's time and in Kevin's time and want to contribute something back to it and who have done well in business life and have done well yeah. in other areas of their life and they want to give something back. Well then a very last one, because I do want to talk Liverpool, Bayern Munich and get Graeme Souness' thoughts. If you're just tuning in, I promise you he is in the room. <laughs> 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 now just to be clear, and yeah. again, because it, it, it is tricky to analyse your plan when there's yeah, so, not so, a full so, vision. So do you want the league away from the FAI and I, if I, so who owns the league? I think there's a lot of work to go in from from uh, independent company to look at the possibility of that not an FAI report but somebody that they're paying yeah. a totally separate uh, company and we've, we've got that we've arranged for that to happen with a little group of people who are just I suppose real decent people who want to see something better and that's the time to, to, to see is there a pathway. Okay. And uh, until then, you know, the thing that drives me or will complete to drive the, the other people around and hopefully the debate will keep going, it's we have to do something better for our young players. Okay. That's the way I see it. Okay.